Hi, uh, my name is uh, Lionel Boucher. I'm the Senior Vice President of Commercial Development at Mevion Medical System. I'm here with Dr. Stephanie Perkins, a professor at Washington University and director of the S. Lee Kling Proton Therapy Center at Barn Jewish Hospital. Thank you, uh, Dr. Perkins, Thanks. to be here with us. Um, the center has been open for almost 10 years. Uh, can you kind of uh, remind us the journey that uh, you took to bring proton therapy to your uh, institution? Yeah, it has been 10 years. Uh, we treated our first patient in uh, 2013. And um, in that 10 years, we've treated almost 1,500 patients. Uh, we'll celebrate that this year. Um, and it has been such a good venture for us, such an improvement in care for our patients. Uh, we're very proud to say that 20% of our patients year to year have been children, um, but we've also used proton therapy for a wide variety of cancers and are really trying to change the field, um, push things forward uh, for our patients and for the technology. How is proton therapy integrated within the radiation oncology? Yeah, so for our center, um, we're a very dense, large medical campus. So it was important for us that Proton Therapy be on site with our main department, uh, which is adjacent to St. Louis Children's Hospital and Barnes Jewish Hospital. So uh, we really consider our Proton Vault kind of Another additional vault uh, would be kind of vault 10 in the department. Um, and so we don't require special coverage, you know, for physician presence. It's just integrated into our center, uh, into our simulators, into our workflow. Um, and that has been really important to us. We did not, uh, we didn't envision the Proton Center being a satellite location. We really envisioned it being on site with our main department. And I think that was a great call by leadership to really focus on being able to provide protons at our main site. How have you seen the uh, indication evolution over the, the, the 10 years? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, as everyone knows that works in protons, the insurance landscape, you know, does continue to be challenging for us, but we work really hard uh, to focus our care on adolescent and young adults. That's been a new um, directive of the center over the last few years um, to decrease the average age of our adult patients, which has been uh, really great. Uh, we've seen a big increase in re-irradiation over the last few years on the machine and also SBRT. That actually comprises a pretty large uh, percentage of our volume, um, which we really find helpful for re-irradiation, uh, retreat SBRT to the lung, uh, rectal recurrences, those sorts of things. Uh, so I'd say those have been, you know, in addition to moving from passive scatter to pencil beam scanning. And then our current uh, vault has a CT on rails in the room, which is going to give us some real leverage and, and ability to move adaptive radiation therapy and being more attentive to changes in tumors and anatomy for our patients. How are you using uh, uh, CT on rail today uh, for, 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 for the proton treatments? Yeah, so every patient we decide on an individual kind of schedule KV, CT, at what frequency. So for some of our patients, we may do a CT every day. Obviously for our SBRT patients, we would do a CT for every fraction. Uh, some of our patients might be once or twice a week. Um, but what's really critical is with the CT on rails, we can now replan. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we decide that day to hold treatment, we can have a new plan ready, usually the next day and certainly within two working days to kind of change that plan on, in an offline fashion, um, which is important as tumors are shrinking are growing, patients are losing weight, um, and the image quality is really excellent. So there's really no guessing when you get that mm -hmm. daily imaging as to what's going on, what changes you might need to make. Have you been, uh, well, you're also chief of uh, pediatric radiation mm -hmm. oncology. Have you been concerned with a uh, higher dose or, or dose from the CT scan? Yes, yeah, so for the children, if we're treating craniospinal or we're treating brain, we actually don't use the CT. I really like KV imaging for those um, modalities. Certainly, if, I, if there's a reason we might want to do CT, we would do it. Um, but we have a low dose protocol that physics has um, made for us, uh, which we think is really important for the children, giving pretty low dose compared to, you know, cone beam CT that we would do over on the x-ray side. Mm -hmm. As Chief of Pediatric Radiation Oncology, how does proton therapy fit within your practice? Yeah, I mean, it's um, 
it's just becoming increasingly critical to have proton therapy available for the kids. Um, so when we meet with parents, it, uh, you know, for most all of our definitive treatments, um, proton therapy is our treatment of choice, especially for our brain tumor patients. Um, and we see them in the main department and simulate them in the main department, and then they transition over to the proton center. Um, but being on site with St. Louis Children's Hospital, having pediatric anesthesia available um, has been pretty seamless in allowing us to provide that care for our kids, whether they're inpatient or outpatient. Um, we certainly do a lot of craniospinal. Um, the last time I looked, about a third of our pediatric mm. patients required craniospinal. Um, so, you know, that's uh, a pretty, pretty big part of the service and something that we've streamlined at this point to be straightforward and pretty easy for even pretty young children to complete without sedation, which is great. What percentage of uh, pediatric patients are sedated? Yeah, general? so we work really hard to try and reduce that as much as possible. We participated in the Stanford study with the Avatar system to provide uh, movies that the children can watch. We have a full-time child life specialist at the Proton Center, but even with those efforts, 40% of the kids still require sedation for either all or part of their treatment, um, which is fine. Um, you know, we have the resources to do that, but certainly any Proton Center ready to treat kids, it's going to be a big part of, of that practice to, to provide that daily sedation. So what are the typical treatment time uh, that you see from pediatric patients, either CSI or, or other intracranial? Yeah, we kind of tell patients in general treatment time will be around 10 minutes per field, you know, and that's probably more like five to 10 minutes per field. So for a posterior fossa boost, that's gonna be a three field treatment. Those kids should be in and out in 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, for craniospinal, we, for the short kids, for little kids, it'll be about 35 minutes. And then for tall um, adolescents, maybe 45 to 50 minutes uh, to kind of march down through those fields. Um, and that, that's a testament to our team who's really worked on how to get from the brain all the way to the bottom. Um, but I think uh, even compared to x-ray therapy is, is quite rapid treatment and certainly much better dosimetry than x-rays. Mm -hmm. So you're uh, installing a, a second system, a second room uh, that, that should be completed, I think, in the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you uh, see the expansion of the department with this second room? Yeah, I mean, we're starting to think about that now. Um, it starts with expanding our staff, and we've already um, done that uh, in preparation, have our therapists and dosimetrists ready and waiting to, to work. Um, I think it's a time for us to really think about more complicated things that we're a little unable to do because we're busy with our one room. Um, Adaptive uh, proton therapy is really uh, something that our department is known for on the x-ray side and we're ready to move that expertise into the proton side. Uh, again, with the CT on rails, we have all that data in the room um, and so we're hoping um, to treat our first proton adaptive this year. We'll see how that goes. Um, and in addition to um, you know moving to the new machine, deciding kind of where to put people and just growing the service, um, I think it's an exciting time to be able to offer this therapy to more patients uh, in the department. So uh, in, in terms of research, uh, you, your team is, has been very productive in, in terms of research in radiation therapy, but w what is the focus today uh, by your team, uh, you yeah. and the physics team? Yeah, uh, research, you know, obviously for clinical research, we have some clinical trials available in the department. Um, uh, our institutional study on retreat for rectal recurrences with SBRT has accrued really nicely. Um, we are moving forward with proton grid therapy. So for those that are used to grid or lattice on the x-ray side, being able to treat very large tumors that otherwise are not very treatable. So our proton team is working on that and um, really hoping to do a three fraction action grid treatment for proton patients starting this summer or this fall. Um, physics really leads the way in uh, research at our, um, at our center. Uh, they're interested in flash dosimetry, they're interested in thermoacoustic um, detection of dose distribution from proton therapy. I mean, the list really goes on and on. Um, and then adaptive, I think, is also kind of in that clinical physics range of how do we do that in real time. Um, from a basic science uh, standpoint, we're very interested in flash, uh, flash dosimetry and the limitations that we currently have 
as a, as a society. Um, and then also some preclinical flash um, uh, working in animal models and potentially with some of the other scientists at WashU is a, is a big uh, hope that we can really grow that program over the next year. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Perkins, thank you for, for sitting with me. Thank you also for your leadership uh, yeah. with the Siteman Cancer Centers, the S. Lee Kling Proton Therapy Centers, and uh, looking forward to many more years of collaboration. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Thank you.